Hey, welcome back to part three of the 1JZ S14 build. We've got the manifold bolted in there. Now we can go ahead and get the turbo mounted, do the downpipe exhaust, fit the, um, the wastegate in there. Probably gonna go ahead and uh, do something like that. Just go straight to the ground with it, but I'm gonna get the turbo and downpipe done first before um, fitting the wastegate. Really want to fit the downpipe as uh, nice and po nice as possible right in this area, keeping nice clearance with the, the brake lines and everything, but uh, giving enough room for the wastegate and the dump tube. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the turbo mount it up and start on the downpipe. So let's get into it. Got the turbo mounted, got it, everything clocked um, where it needs to be. Got the oil drain, or uh, sorry, the oil feed um, perfectly straight up, drain perfectly straight down. Uh, got the rotation on the, uh, the turbo where I want it. Um, I'll be cutting this outlet off of the compressor and doing a stepped, uh, well, tight radius 90, then step up to, I believe this is two and three quarter from what I remember. And uh, yeah, kind of already started playing with some random cuts for the downpipe. And I uh, kind of want to show you guys the materials I'll be using for the exhaust and the downpipe, so. Got all these elbows, these are 1.5D uh, radius, and um, got some some slip joints, some clamps, um, got this little cut for the wastegate, uh, play with that a little bit, so that's just a random piece that I had, I actually worked pretty good, got a nice bellow, these are directional, so you don't want the exhaust flowing this way because you'll blow these, it's a... Uh, inner liner sleeved bellow. So if you get exhaust going in on this side, it's gonna blow out the corrugated flex part of the bellow. So never install those backwards. We got a heat sink OT bungs. Got some materials for a, a oil drain extension so that the AN line is not in the hot spot. Probably not even gonna need 90. Might not be long enough for the dump tube, but we got lots of three inch and four inch and the inch and a half for the dump tube. So, and I'm going to be using this cutting fixture for the elbows. Pretty much you'll throw that in, zero on the, the fixture and clamp it at whatever angle you want your cut to be at. So make sure nice, precise cutting, make sure you're cutting right in the center of the bend and you not, don't have some weird cut. So pretty nice to have uh, the proper cutting fixtures for the bandsaw. But so, like I said, I was already playing around with some random cuts. So I kind of know, kind of know what uh, the routing is gonna be. So I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting some material and tacking some stuff together. And the downpipe should go pretty pretty easy. We got lots of room to play with, so I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting some stainless.
so we made some progress on the downpipe and this is what uh come up so far got some pretty good clearance from everything um i just have that straight section taped in place just as a placeholder so i can see like where I got the downpipe aiming at. Probably gonna trim that some and put the flex in that location. And then I also got uh, the wastegate located, welded on the flange, get the inside welded. And you can kind of see the Sharpie marks, got that marked and the manifold marked. And it's gonna be pretty much sitting right here. Just have to pull the manifold off to weld that on, but we'll have some pretty good clearance for everything. And I'll just kind of, you know, right in that gap right there, straight down. Probably have to put a little bit of bend in the wastegate dump tube. And then that runner right here. I'm gonna put my weld tag right there. And that should be pretty visible because I didn't give myself enough room on any of these front runners for my weld tag. So it's gonna go on cylinder five. And you'll be able to see it just through that gap between the wastegate and the downpipe. So should be pretty cool looking, I think. But I think I'm going to um, keep working on this downpipe. Get the downpipe uh, finished up to the slip joint. And then I'll pull the manifold off completely. Put the wastegate on the manifold. Get that welded out. And then uh, probably... Do the exhaust next. And once that's all done, another thing that I didn't really talk about is uh, the cooling system. This thing has some overheating issues and they've tried a lot of things, putting some Mishimoto fans on and they even experimented with putting fans in the front, but I think that's hurting them more than helping them, unfortunately. But uh, I already went ahead and ordered a Koyo N-Flow swap radiator for the S14. And it's tanks on the side as opposed to the top. They cool better. And uh, it's a dual pass. Um, where this is a single pass. So the inlet and outlet are going to be on the same side. There will be a divider in the tank. And... I'm going to uh, cut this down and do a swirl pot. And it's just going to go uh, straight into the swirl pot, right into the radiator, out the bottom, and back into the thermostat. Um, should uh, help a lot. And also, ordered spall fans that flow 2700 CFM. And... Uh, that should solve their cooling issues. And they also really need to put an oil cooler on this thing. Jay-Z's produce a lot of temp and oil cooler. It's definitely necessary to keep these things cool. But yep, that's, uh, that's everything that will be done to the car. Let's go ahead and get this downpipe finished up so I can pull the manifold off and uh, yeah, get some welding, welding going on.
All right, so the manifold is now 100% finished. Got the wastegate welded on and got it jigged up. So I can replicate this for anybody that wants one of these manifolds. We also got the downpipe finished up. Got two heat sink O2 bungs in. Um, now, before we throw this back on the car, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drain the coolant gonna pull the radiator and the fans out and gonna remove this uh, coolant pipe because this feeds um, around the back of the, the motor and kind of ends somewhere over here and feeds the I believe the idle control valve or something like that but uh, they want to get rid of any possible um, leak points kind of like they got this cap here. This could potentially blow out or the line in the back kind of blows out. That stuff's not needed anyways. It's more for like emissions and whatnot. Um, so I'm going to uh, take this off, cut the tube at the flange and uh, weld a AN fitting, stainless AN fitting to this. And then we're gonna run just a single line to the heater core back there. Um, and then obviously I'm gonna do the swirl pot right here, but uh, I wanna get that line removed, modify that, maybe even go ahead and make the line for that somehow. Uh, if I have everything before I throw the manifold back in, um, I still need to order new studs um, and hardware and gaskets. Oops, but this is pretty much what came out. Uh, had some missing hardware too. Some of the studs are beyond reusable. Oops. But um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get all new OEM uh, studs and copper coated nuts, along with OEM gaskets. With uh, getting the whisk gate on, I also went ahead and put the tag on there, so people know. Yeah, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get the car up in the air, start draining the coolant and pulling all that stuff off. So let's get into that. So we got the radiator and fans pulled out of the car and we got all the space to work with, which isn't uh, a lot of space to be honest. But now that we got the radiator out, it's um, not sure how great it was working with all these fins being bent and whatnot. And the new radiator and fan shroud um, setup came in. So we're gonna open this up, show you guys what it looks like, what I have planned out for installing it. Um, and uh, yeah, this should be a lot better setup and these fans should flow a lot, a lot more air than the old setup, so. Let's go ahead and un unbox this stuff and I'll show you guys what it is. All right, so here's the radiator. It is a Koyo N-Flow meant for um, LS swapped S14s. It's And the um, nice thing about this radiator is it's got the tanks on the sides and uh, side tanks seem to cool better than top tanks, top and bottom. And the inlet and outlet are both on the same side where the other radiator, um, it's got the, the inlet on this side and then it's got a divider. So it makes it a dual, um, a dual flow um, radiator. So water comes in drops down, comes across, drops down again, comes across a second time. So the, the, wa the water is getting uh, cooled twice, essentially. It's getting, uh, spending more time in the radiator um, for cooling and then comes back out. <clears throat> and then we got the twin spall fans. Um, and these flow like 2700 CFM, which is quite a bit more than the Michi fans that it, it originally had, so. Should be quite a bit of upgrade. And then 
this fan setup doesn't bolt onto this radiator, so I'm going to have to make some, some brackets for it, but this setup should be a, quite a bit of an upgrade over the Mishi setup, so now that we got that, I'm going to go ahead and test fit it in the car, and um, it's a little bit thicker than the old setup, but uh, I think what I'm going to do is cut this bar out if, I, if need be, cut these welds, and extend this out like another inch or so, and then run the bar farther forward and tilt the radiator some to allow clearance with the front of the motor. Worst case. So I don't know if it's gonna fit, fit or not. So that's the plan. And uh, yeah, it's um, not what I'm gonna do next. Just wanted to show you guys uh, now that I got stuff in kind of the rough idea of how I wanted to go about this. But um, yeah, next thing is uh, getting this manifold back in down pipe, get the wastegate on, do the wastegate dump tube, um, do the exhaust, and uh, we changed the plans a little bit. We're not gonna pull this pipe out and modify that just yet. We're gonna save that for a later date because this, um, this hard line wraps all the way around and like goes halfway under the intake. It's not really an ideal job to do with the engine in the car without pulling the intake manifold. So we're going to hold off on that to a later date, but I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of the stainless work done on this before moving towards the cooling system. I'm going to go ahead and just save the cooling system for the very last job of the car. So, so we got everything bolted back on, got the wastegate on, got it clocked and roughly the orientation I wanted at. Got this loosely uh, clamped in, just enough for it to hold itself, but I could still adjust it if need to from underneath. Um, before I pulled this uh, turbo off last time, as you can see, there's a couple marks right there. Um, just to help me uh, line everything back up easily for final mock-up. Just makes things a lot easier just so i know that the downpipe fit in that orientation and whatnot so now that you can see from underneath the uh wastegate's got a pretty good straight shot um down to the ground you can see good clearance with the the downpipe so yeah i might rotate this just a smidge this way and have a, a nice, um, pretty straight shot down. We'll have to put a slight bend right off the flange of that wastegate, but it should be pretty, pretty easy to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and start mocking up some tubing, get the flange on there and uh, start cutting some pieces and see what, what I come up with. finish up the exhaust on the S14. I didn't really, I didn't film any of it to be honest. Um, I just kind of wanted, wanted to get it knocked out, but I'm going to show you um, what I did and uh, how it came out. So, obviously, downpipe, wastegate dump, and then good old slip joints with um, these McKaylor clamps. Uh, I like how low profile they are and uh it's um yeah it's a lot easier i think than v-bands and uh yeah low profile so you don't have to worry about uh, clearance with stuff you know it's tucked up pretty tight um then from there got this nice little mount that i made bolts into I'm not really sure what bolts here from factory but this is a second s14 that 
I've utilized these mounts for. Um, and I cut a tube in half, uh, clamped it to the side of this tube, uh, clamped it with the McKaylor clamp again, and bent up these little 3 8 stainless rods and uh, crossed them to help give it some strength uh, in case this thing gets bashed, in, bashed into the ground, which it probably will. Um, tucked it up fairly tight under the subframe with another slip joint that uh, ends right before the axle just in case, you know, he breaks an axle at the track, you can slip this off and get to everything pretty easy. Uh, then I kind of kicked it up a little bit, brought it out um, for more ground clearance, bent it back straight and exited with a nice pie cut turn down. Nice and centered in the uh, the bumper cutout. What do you think, Tyson? But yeah, that's, um, that's how the exhaust came out. Pretty happy with it. Nice, free flowing, minimal, minimal bends. Oh, love this shot of the manifold. Came out sick. So next thing I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna bend up a, uh, or not bend up, but make a hard mount, hard line coming from the turbo drain and uh, have it snake through the manifold and weld a stainless A and fitting there. And then just a regular line to the, um, the, the regular drain just to keep the AN line out of uh, the high temperature that the manifold will see. Um, so yeah, I got this, uh, these flanges, I have laser cut for this J-pipe, stainless AN fitting. So I'll go ahead and cut this up, uh, mock everything up get the um, the hard line where I want to terminate at, and then use some AN fittings and some line I had laying here. Uh, actually, Dylan gave me these because I didn't have these, so shout out Dylan for supplying these. But um, yes, I'm going to go ahead, lower the car back down, and start doing the oil drain next. And uh, that would be it for all the stainless work on this, and we can move to all the aluminum stuff, so. Yeah, let's go ahead and get into that fun stuff. Oil drain is all mocked up and tacked together. Put a fitting on just for um, checking clearance with the radiator hose. And you can see it's pretty, pretty good straight shot to the uh, the drain on the pan. Got some clearance there. So now I'm going to uh, pull it off, weld it up and make the uh, the line from the hard line to the the pan here you can see the uh Hard line in all its glory right before I weld it. Also gives you a pretty good shot of the uh, the manifold and stuff on the car. So yeah, 
going to go ahead and bolt this from the turbo, get it all welded up, bolt the back in, and then finish making the line from here to the pan. Got the oil drain finished welded. I wanted to talk about a couple things. Um, I didn't weld the flange on the uh, the outside. I did weld it on the inside and uh, resurfaced it. Um, mainly, I didn't want there to be any chance of the, uh, the bolt um, getting into the weld. Um, although there, there does appear to be a decent amount of room. Um, just didn't want to deal with potential clearance issues. Um, and then, uh, let's loosen this up. So, I got these stainless steel caps for uh, A and things so that I can clamp them like this to, um, to weld them. And I could even clamp into my positioner if I was going to do a bunch of these. And uh, the reason I got these stainless ones because if you use like a um, just get you know a regular aluminum and fitting and you use one of those because it's anodized, it's not going to ground through it, and uh, you'll potentially ruin your fitting really quick because uh, a lot of times they'll eventually. Um, arc through the anodizing at random locations. And if that happens to be on the threads of your fitting, well, you just ruined your fitting and you're gonna not be happy. So just a little heads up for anyone that plans to do something like this. Get yourself a uh, stainless cap. And then I also drilled a hole through it to back purge through it. So, yup, gonna go ahead. Get that back on the car and make a line. All right, so we got the line made and halfway installed. I didn't install all the way because I got to pull all the stuff back out anyways. But pretty good free flowing out of harm's way from heat from the manifold. So yeah, got all that finished up. Now um, I'm gonna end this video here and start the next video off with doing the, um, gotta do the swirl pot, modify the housing to made up to the intercooler piping, uh, probably cut this bar out, move it forward some, and make all the new mounting points for the new radiator, mount the fan on the radiator, uh, add some thermocouples into the radiator, as requested from the customer, Kevin and his dad, so. Um, I think that's, that's the last of the stuff. And then Brendan's going to be installing a Link ECU and um, electronic boost controller. And he's gonna take it and dyno tune it. So probably won't make much more than stock because it's still a uh, stock fuel system on pump gas. So uh, probably next winter we'll upgrade the fuel system and um, turn it up some more, but should be pretty good um, upgrade from what he was running before. So pretty excited to see how this is gonna perform. But uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next one. We'll get into the, the last the last stuff that uh, we need to do to finish this car. So see you at the next one.